the release date for Street Fighter 6 has been pegged as a quarter one of next year. So 2023, the game is supposedly going to be coming. We're looking at probably an announcement here in February and March, not that far away. Um, but as I've mentioned before, it's also the 35th anniversary. Maybe they'll go back and say, hey, the 30th anniversary is really successful for us. Uh, the 30th anniversary product, it sold 2 million copies. Here's the 35th anniversary version of Street Fighter. Here's Ultra Street Fighter 4 included in it. It has rolled that code. The, the idea here would be to take the Street Fighter anniversary collection of games and update them once every five years or so with new features, new bells and whistles, uh, the latest kind of like greatest net code that they've got and whatnot, um, and, and basically re-release it. And if you, if you upgrade, you get a reduced price on it. All right, John, I wanted to talk about uh, Street Fighter VI update um, and the 35th anniversary. Um, but before we get into it, if everyone doesn't mind Psycho Crushing the like button, it actually helps out the channel a ton. We really super Psycho appreciate it. Crusher. But it is officially the 35th anniversary of Street Fighter. And I want to talk about what that could mean. And first off, we got Capcom Cup 8 canceled. They, they've switched instead of calling it tiers to just a number of the, the tournament and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. And the focus is going to shift to online finals. Um, and that is potentially where we could see a Street Fighter 6 announcement, although yes. we could see an entirely separate announcement video and that just showcases stuff for the 35th anniversary because Capcom kind of already does this with the seasonal updates of Street Fighter 5. It is Those have been very successful. Uh, Masamoto and uh, Nakayama, uh, they do a great job uh, getting those guys up there again and saying, hey, uh, first big announcement here is Street Fighter 6 and the next one is you know this, this, and that. Like I personally would be super hyped up by that um even if you know we don't get it at a live event uh because you know there's no, not going to be in a live event like i would be very okay with that but like for you john like does that kind of recapture the energy and hype at least it, as best we kind of can with the, these COVID times for you the, the idea of like the announcement of of um, yeah just what being exactly a video like another showcase video like a fall spring summer update the 35th anniversary video like it, it, I, I know it's not the same but like all things considered would that work as well for you do you yeah, think i've come to expect about as much it's like if we could have things come back and, and you know be presented in more of a live fashion sure that'd be great but i mean that just hasn't been the way of the world for the last couple of years now and so i understand it and and you know things have moved so much from e3 and such and the playstation experience to just an online, you know, Nintendo Direct or a, a PlayStation, is it, do they call it PlayStation Direct? I forget off the top of my head. Uh, uh, state of Play. Experience, yeah, or State of Play or something like that. Yeah, yeah. but online presentations, and, and we've been just fine with them. In fact, hey, we don't have to buy a ticket. We can sit at home. We can go get our coffee. We can go to the bathroom, all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's, point is, yeah, I think it would be just fine. And I also don't think Capcom has a ton of wiggle room. Maybe they do when they announce, but in terms of like when they would want to release, I don't, I see them being pretty married to and restricted by the pro tour. So, I mean, maybe they, maybe they delay it or something like that. Maybe they speed it up. I'm not sure, but I, I do think it's going to come online and, and that's going to be just fine. It, it is what it is. And plus everything gets leaked online anyway. That's where everyone hears about stuff first anyway, these days anyway. Yeah, just anyway. build up a, a nice announcement. Just say, hey, do a countdown clock. You know, the Street Fighter 35th anniversary announcement's coming in, you know, 10 days, 14 days, whatever. You know, get get your team in there and make it a fun production. You know, and, and people mm -hmm. have been very receptive over, the, over those videos. But um, anyway, so the release date for Street Fighter 6 has been pegged as a quarter one of next year. So 2023, the game is supposedly going to be coming. Um, and if they had their traditional marketing ramp up, they'll want about a year's time to get things going. So we're, we're looking at probably an announcement here in February or March, not that far away. Um, but as I've mentioned before, it's also the 35th anniversary. So it, we're expecting that, that big announcement, but also maybe we'll have some other stuff coming in there. Um, uh, like, for example maybe they'll go back and say, hey, the 30th anniversary is really successful for us. Uh, the 30th anniversary product, it sold 2 million copies. Here's a, the 35th anniversary version of Street Fighter. Here's Ultra Street Fighter 4 included in it. It has rollback hey. code. It has other stuff in there that you know we potentially do. And, and, and the, the idea here, John, I want to pitch you on this and see if you would be on board with it, would be to take the Street Fighter anniversary collection of games and update them once every five years or so with new features, new bells and whistles, uh, the latest kind of like greatest net code that they've got and whatnot um, and, and basically re-release it. And if you if you upgrade, you get a reduced price on it. Like if you bought it, you know, for 60 bucks or whatever it came out, I think it came out at like 40. Um, like, but if you want to upgrade again, it's like 20 bucks every year to upgrade it or like not every year, every five years. That's a big key difference. Would that be something you'd be on board with? Um, 
if I wanted to continually play those particular games online and hey, if, if, uh, I mean, I, I don't need that for the, for the collection because I don't spend my time playing those games that much. Um, but I can, I know a bunch of people that would, so I do think it's a good business practice. And maybe if it were, uh, you know, if street fighter four were part of that deal, or, you know, there was an option for street fighter four, like you said, then that might be for me as well. Point is, yeah, a, 20 bucks or so every five years i think that's fine in terms of maintenance to be able to, to continually play older street fighter games online uh in in a uh, acceptable um, you know net code and and rate i think that'd be great and uh, i think a lot of people would too yeah, and, and there's an opportunity here. Now, the budget is going to be lower for a game like this. Uh, this is not a AAA game that Capcom's putting out there. They they can't afford to like just completely revamp this stuff from top to bottom. But um, again, you add in something like rollback code to Ultra Street Fighter 4, which it badly needs, right? Um, and then you would probably want to go back there and make uh, most, if not all, of the titles playable online instead of just the four of them that we got previously. And they actually could revamp the online matchmaking system uh, to make it just kind of easier to play and track other players, because right now it's a little bit of like, if you go to play the 30th anniversary online, it's a little dicey, kind of like how it mm. works, but maybe do some like Tetris 99 style mode where you know you can play in a tournament and play all these different kind of things like you could make this like just adding in features for people to kind of compete against each other make it a little bit more kind of plug and play a little easier that would be really nice and in my opinion a really good selling point for this and, and um the idea here again is that they they go back and they update it once every five years so like you know we get ultra street fighter 4 with the 35th anniversary right but with the 40th anniversary we get street fighter 5 in there you know, and it's like, oh, okay, so like you guys basically just keep adding to, you know, the if you, here's the old package of Street Fighter games that a lot of people love, and we update it every five years with like the latest and greatest stuff, uh, modern trappings, other things, you know, maybe uh, higher resolution options, all this kind of cool stuff that would be nice to have in there. And it's like, dude, I can play Street Fighter 2 at 4K resolution. I don't know how that's going to look, but you know, if they add the right filters and right things in there, maybe it looks really awesome. And, and just kind of doing stuff of that nature, I would be really excited about personally. Um, and, and I just kind of wanted to gauge like what you thought the community's reaction might be. I think that the community has shown first and foremost that they love these re-releases because Capcom keeps making them and people keep buying them. Right. And then also they've shown that if Capcom isn't going to make them for whatever reason, when they're wanting them, they will make them. Right. And they'll find ways of playing MVC2, uh, you know, and, and, and these games that are like locked away and such. And like it would be nice if the developers would uh, make it as easy as possible and accessible as possible. But even when not, it's like people will mod their stuff there. Like technology is where it's at right now. And there's a lot of power in the players. They're going to figure out ways of playing these old games. People will still consume them. And if you can sprinkle a little modernization into them, like, hey, a training mode where it didn't have it before. Hey, online training or online capabilities at all or you know better resolution better graphics maybe we fix some bug that everyone was pissed off that's been in the game for forever and it's just like yeah we can get rid of that now um things along those lines you can put modern bells and whistles on them. they'll play the old version no matter what i said i will play the old version no matter what uh but if you can give us a little modernized i, I think that will go a long way i, I it's foolproof definitely gonna work <laughs> it's it's a 35th anniversary they need to have more than just one major announcement they've got to have something in there to kind of hype people up and you know there's so much potential here with this franchise it's most, one of the most beloved franchises in the history of video games like this is really far up there so i'm i'm expecting multiple announcements you know and not just esports stuff and all that but um you know maybe they can uh with the the 35th anniversary maybe they can bring back a ultra street fighter 4 tournament on the cpt you know like hey uh this is a brand new game for the the 35th anniversary uh you know we want to see people come back and play this and other stuff like that there's a lot of opportunity to to really kind of reignite things and there, there's a history of them doing this like they, when they did the uh, 30th anniversary they put some of those games back on the you know parts of the the tour and stuff um so there's a lot they could do to just kind of take what's there and just build some momentum behind it build some good positive vibes um you know bringing back street fighter 4 is just it's it's one of the most beloved street fighter games ever and then you've got it packaged with street fighter 2 you've got updated netco you've got all this stuff and it's like oh this is going to cost me 20 30 bucks or and if i bought it before maybe it's going to cost me 10 or 15 Hell yeah, sign me up. You know, so that would be the kind of the, the idea here. And of course, you know, messaging saying, hey, we're going to keep doing this going forward. You know, you don't need to buy it every year. If you've, if you've got all the games you want, all the ways you want it, you know, it's already there for you. But every year would be too, too much. Yeah. That would be an obvious cash grab. Exactly. It's like it's, these do not have that much value where we need to pay for them yearly to be slightly updated. Yes. Every five years. 
you know, bring back Street Fighter Five and say, hey, here's Edition Select if you wanted to go back to the dark days of vanilla <laughs> and like experience yeah. without having a collie that worked really well, uh, you can, you know, and, yeah. and maybe maybe they could even do something like, hey, here's USF4 released and Elena has been rebalanced. Even that just by itself, as weird as it is to just rebalance one character, that would get a lot of attention just because of the the kind of like the lore around Street Fighter, the, the history, the memory yeah. of it. Um, so, but yeah, so much potential there. And I mean, it's not even untapped. I think we've capcom taps it all the time but uh should continue to do so yeah well uh i'm glad you brought up rebalancing but we're going to actually save that one for next week because we've got a huge blowout episode actually on rebalancing the old street fighter games but we're going to get into that next time oh i'm excited every year every five years that's a big key difference would that be something you'd be on board with um if i wanted to continually play those particular games online and hey if if 